Hello everyone. I'm Pastor Steve Lobb and I'm the pastor of both the Elkhart and the Chestnut United Methodist Churches. And uh, I'm here today to just share a, a, a scripture with you and a, and a brief message, although some don't necessarily view it as brief, but uh, I do try to keep them uh, compressed. We, we all have very busy schedules out there and I really appreciate you taking the time to to spend some of that valuable time with me as as we do go through the scriptures and we we listen for God's word and and hopefully he uses me as a, a vehicle or a vessel and uh, he is speaking to you but anyway thank you and um, our scripture this morning comes from the book of Mark we're in chapter 4 and we're in we're going to read verses 26 through 34 get organized up here all right we're in mark chapter 4 verses 26 through 34 he also said this is what the kingdom of god is like a man scatters seed on the ground night and day whether he sleeps or gets up the seed sprouts and grows though he does not know how all by itself the soil produces grain, first the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it, because the harvest has come. Again he said, What shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest seed you plant in the ground. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants, with such big branches that the birds of the air can perch in its shade. With many similar parables, Jesus spoke to them as much as they could understand. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. But when he was alone with his own disciples, he explained everything. And this is the Word of God for the people of God. And I'm confident that uh, the people out there are saying, thanks be to God. Okay, pray with me, please. O oh Lord, our Father in heaven, may the words from my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts together, may they not only be acceptable, but may they be pleasing to you, you who are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. All right, let's have a quick sip of coffee here and get ready for the sermon. Our sermon title for this morning is, What is the Kingdom of God? Now, I want to start out today by talking about Jesus' encounter with a fellow named Nicodemus, uh, a person who was a Pharisee, and he was also a seeker. Jesus told Nicodemus, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. Of course, Nicodemus was confused by this, but what Jesus was saying is that in order to see God's kingdom, a person must be born not only in the earthly sense, and that is being born of our worldly mother and father, but a person must also be born spiritually. In order to see God's kingdom, we must be born of God through God's Holy Spirit. And this happens when we believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We repent of our sins and, and we put our whole trust, our entire lives, into His hands making the decision that we will become followers of Jesus. When this happens, we begin to change in some pretty radical and, and new ways because God's Holy Spirit takes up residence in our lives and begins changing us from the inside out. We find in 2 Corinthians, if anyone is in Christ, he or she is a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. 
And to be in Christ is to be in the kingdom of God and to see the kingdom of God. Now, some of you might be thinking right now that the kingdom of God only refers to, to what happens to those of us who are, are saved through faith in Christ after we die. We often think of the kingdom of God as only some geographical place, as heaven or paradise. But this isn't what Jesus means when he speaks about the kingdom of God. Sure, Jesus is speaking about eternal life with God, but he's not just talking about some place where we go after we die. He's talking about life right here and right now. You see, the kingdom of God really means the reign of God. And so, when we enter the kingdom of God, we're also entering the realm of new life where God reigns. We're encountering the realm of new life where Jesus is Lord. We're allowing Jesus Christ to be in control of our lives. We're allowing God to have free reign over our lives and our decisions and, and pretty much every aspect of everything. That's what it means to enter the kingdom of God or to see the kingdom of God. It's what we see and experience once we allow God to be in control. And what freedom, what burdens are lifted, what new life is granted when we allow God to bring us into God's reign. Yes, praise God. If anyone is in Christ, he or she is a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. In our gospel lesson for, the, for today, we come across Jesus saying, this is what the kingdom of God is like. And what shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? Well, it is like, well, Jesus did this a lot when trying to get across to those who were listening what it is like to live under the reign of God. He compared it to things we can understand or, or relate to. Jesus spoke of, of earthly things in order to convey heavenly truths. And this makes sense, doesn't it? We can't possibly know what something is like unless we've experienced it, touched it, tasted it, or seen it. Let's just say that, that you have seen a color that no one else in the entire world has seen. Well, how would you go about explaining that to someone else? You would have to say, well, this color is like. Otherwise, there's no chance that anyone would be able to even come close to grasping what you were talking about. So again and again, throughout the New Testament, Jesus tells us the kingdom of God is like. Now, Jesus doesn't tell us that the kingdom of God is a treasure hidden in a field, or that the kingdom of God is a net that was let down into the lake and, and caught all kinds of fish. Or that the kingdom of God is yeast that a, a woman took and mixed into a large amount of flour until it worked through the dough. And, and you get what I'm doing here, and I could go on and on and on with examples. But no, instead, Jesus says that the kingdom of God is like these examples. So in our gospel lesson for today, we, we see Jesus using illustrations from the, the growth of nature to describe the kingdom of God. In verses 26 through 29, Jesus is telling us that the kingdom of God is happening. And for those who are able to see it, there are clear signs of its reality. A man scatters seed on the ground. Night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. In and through the lives of those who are allowing God's reign to control their lives, that seed of faith, that seed of grace, that very seed of salvation is sprouting and growing. And just like we see a plant every day, we can't see a, its growth taking place. When we look at our lives from one day to the next, we may not be able to see any Christian growth or maturity, but that doesn't mean that growth is not taking place. Because in the same way that nature's growth is constant, 
so is the growth of the Christian who is living within the reign of God. The sun comes out every day and the seed grows and sprouts. The rain comes and the seed grows and sprouts. And before you know it, there is first the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. Then the grain ripens and it's time for the harvest. For those living in the kingdom of God, God is in control of our lives. And thus, God is in control of our Christian growth toward becoming more and more like Christ. That's what theologians like to call the, the process of sanctification or, or going on towards perfection. Because when God is in control of our lives, we're going to rely on Him for our every decision. And we, re and we are going to rely on God's grace to enable us to make it through each and every decision that we have. We're going to rely on God's grace to forgive us when we fall short or sin. And we're going to rely on God's grace to enable us to pick ourselves up and try again when we fail. When we are living under the reign of God, God is the one who causes us to grow from a seed, to a stalk, to a head, then to the full kernel in the head. When we are living under the reign of God, we may not see the growth happening every day. But rest assured, it is happening. And when we look back on our lives a year ago or five years ago or, or ten years ago, we will see how much Christian growth and maturity God has caused to happen in our lives through our living under His reign. And my friends, there is nothing more exciting than this for the Christian. Are you living under the reign of God? Really? living under the reign of God? If not, it's never too late to allow Jesus to be the Lord of your life. It's never too late to allow God to take complete control. We are never too old to be born again. Just as nature's growth is inevitable, so is the growth of the Christian who is living under the reign of God. And this growth can and will make such a difference not only in our lives, but in the lives of those around us. Because there is nothing so powerful as growth. A tree can split concrete pavement with the power of its growth. A weed can push its green head through an asphalt parking lot. Nothing can stop growth. And it's the same way with those living in the kingdom. In spite of all the devil's schemes, nothing can stop the good that comes from that comes to this world through those who are growing in their love for others, in their service to others, in their acceptance and kindness and generosity to others through living under the reign of God. Good fruit will come. Good things will happen. Good results will occur for and through those who allow God's reign to rule their lives. In verse 31, Jesus goes on to say the kingdom of God is, is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest seed you plant in the ground. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants, with such big branches that the birds of the air can perch in its shade. Here again, Jesus is talking about the growth that takes place and the results of living under the reign of God. Before we were converted to Christianity, our lives may appear to be very small and, and insignificant. Before we begin living under the reign of God, we might not have a lot of good things to show for all the living we've done. Or our lives may appear to be as small as that mustard seed we talked about. But once we begin living, really living in Jesus Christ, our lives sprout and take root. We find that God begins using us to bring others into his kingdom or reign. We find that some of the old sinful habits and addictions, which, which used to plague us like monkeys on our back, well, 
God begins to lift these things off of us, we find that we are drawn to the reading of God's Word and, and that through the reading of God's Word, we are fed with meaning and purpose and hope. We find that we not only enjoy, but we also need the fellowship of our Christian brothers and sisters. Worship becomes real and active and alive. We begin treating people differently and, and looking at people in a different light. A light with love. The kind of love that God has. And one day, as a result of living under the reign of God, we find that our lives, which once seemed so small and so insignificant, sort of like that little mustard seed, well, we've all grown and become the largest of all garden plants, with such big branches that others are able to perch and find and rest in the shade in witnessing what God has accomplished in us. This is what it's like to live under the reign of God. We're able to live in this very difficult and often painful world and not only live through it, but be victorious over it through the power of Jesus Christ and His Holy Spirit changing us, molding us, causing us to grow and mature in love from the inside out. There's a hymn in our hymnals, and you'll find it on page 394. The kingdom of God is like the description given in these words, and uh, we sang them earlier today. Something beautiful, something good. All my confusion, he understood. All I had to offer him was brokenness and strife. But he, he made something beautiful of my life. If you're not living under the reign of God, won't you take that most important first step right here, right now, today, this very instant, and allow God to make something beautiful of your life? My prayer is that you will. And amen. Well, that concludes our, our message for today, and uh, I hope there was something in there for you. And I have to admit myself, I fall into the trap sometimes of, of thinking of the kingdom of God as, as heaven and paradise. But the fact of the matter is, our God is the creator of all things, including this world. That makes right now where we're living and what we're doing, we are already living in the kingdom of God. The thing is, as Christians, we need to do our part so that others also come to realize that as well. How do we do that? It's not that hard. We just show them the same love, the same grace, the same mercy, and we extend to them the same hope that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, extended to us. That's it. I really can't expand much more on that, so I'm not even going to try. I hope you all have a, a great week this coming week. I hope the past week was, was equally good. And uh, as always, I, I, I can't wait to get back with you again very soon. So in the meantime, make sure that you stay connected. Stay connected with each other. It's very important. But more important than that, make sure that you're staying connected to God. Bye for now.